everyone reaches a point where there is a decision to make. Should I push through the challenges or should I quit? But how do you decide which path to take? When is it the right time to quit? Is it now the time to pivot? Should you start something new? Everyone has been through this slump or dip. And what about strategic quitting? So that you say no to the things that aren't that important and focus on the things that bring you value. Well, let's find out everything. Hi folks, I'm Chuck and welcome back to the channel. As you see, I have a really nice table now. Um, I feel way more comfortable <laughs> with this table right now. I've seen so many people quitting too fast or investing too much time and energy in things that aren't relevant to them. So I have decided to make this video to help you figure it out. And the main reason of this whole phenomenon is the so-called deep, which is a concept introduced by Seth Godin in the book The Deep. The deep is a period of challenge why person a goal. Another word for this is a slump. This period is crucial to determine success or failure and everyone has it not just one but multiple times in a project. It is like going to the gym you know like in the beginning everything works fine you see a lot of results but one morning you wake up not feeling it and then you realize that for the past month you haven't seen actually any results and exactly there you are in the deep. We can categorize these challenges in three types. The first one is the deep which is when you feel stuck because it's human and natural. But if you push through, you can achieve your end goal. The second one is called cool de sac, which is French for dead end. And this is basically those dead end situations that can improve despite your effort. And the third one is the cliff, which is when everything went super nice in the beginning, but for some reason, there was a rapid decline or failure. And you might be thinking, what does this have to do with this channel? And it is pretty easy. I concentrate in three pillars, personal finances, investments and entrepreneurship and then there is one more pillar which is productivity that you need for every other pillar and in every pillar like in every situation in life you'll encounter the dip should you keep investing or should you quit should you keep that investment or should you sell should you keep your entrepreneurship slash side hustles or should you quit them and so on that's why it's super important to identify if you are in a dip in a cul-de-sac or in a cliff because you might be quitting things when you just got a challenge which is normal or you might be keeping doing things that are going nowhere so to know if you're in the deep you have to ask you a couple of things do i know if this is temporal that way you'll know if this is a temporal setback second question what growth or improvement can i expect if i keep pushing with this you'll see if there is a growth for potential. Another question, have others faced similar challenge and come out successful? Here you can find the historical precedent. And the last question, do I currently have or can I realistically acquire the resources like time, money and the skills needed? Which will tell you if you have the resource availability. If your answers are positive, doesn't matter how you feel, you are in the deep. So even if you feel like panicking, which might be the reason why you are feeling that that, you just have to push through because believing that is light on the other side. Now, to recognize a cool de sac, there are three things that will answer you that. The first thing is that you don't see improvement despite your effort. If your hard work isn't leading to progress or growth, it might be a cool de sac. These situations often feel like you're running in place. The second thing is that you have a lack of motivation or interest. And that might be that you no longer feel passionate or interest in what you're doing. And it could indicate that you are in a dead end situation. And finally, there should be a consistent feedback loop. Seek for feedback and if consistent feedback suggests that there is a little to no scope for growth, then it might be a cul-de-sac. However, I think that it's important to know how much time you have to spend in order to see if there is no potential growth or if it's just something that needs more time because it might feel like a cul-de-sac but maybe you haven't tried enough. So to know if it has been enough, here are the things that you have to know. First, there are industry pension marks you have to research typical growth pattern this can give you an idea on how long it usually takes for similar projects to gain traction for example if you have a small business you should find other business in that niche or find out how long did it take them to make it you should have content and a strategy review periods in the short term you have to review the strategy every three to six months and in the medium term you have to review every one to two years because this allows seasonal variations and in that period of time, 
you can test different short-term strategies and build a base. You also have to have goal settings and milestones. So set realistic short-term and long-term goals and evaluate the progress that you have been making in the set intervals that we spoke before. If you consistently miss short-term goals, that might be a sign to pivot your strategy. Not quit already, but pivot. But if you are not meeting the long-term goals, maybe you are in a cool de sac. You also have to take a look at your personal commitment and resources, meaning that you have to consider your own level of commitment and the resources like time, money, and effort that you can sustainably invest. And again, it is good to know that you can pivot instead of quitting. Sometimes it is not about quitting everything, but pivoting to a new strategy or to a new approach. And for that, you have to analyze which aspects are working and which ones are not. So as a rule of thumb, I said that if you have the motivation and the interest, then you should try your idea for at least two two years and then see if you want to continue. With this in mind, you will see that you can decide in advance when to quit because you should decide before the race ends the conditions that would cause you stop and drop out. But if everything was working fine and for some reason, all of a sudden nothing works anymore, then maybe you are in a cliff. And these are the factors that can help you identify if you are in a cliff. The first one is that a typical cliff has an initial success followed by a sudden and drop. This is what I was spoken before. Everything was working fine and at some point for some reason there is a chart decline. With market or environmental change you can know the cause of the current decline or predict one in the future. Here you have to take a look at the market, technology, macroeconomics, consumer behavior and so on. This is for example super helpful for investments. Let's say you have a position and the company have been performing amazingly for the past 10 to 20 years but they are in catching with the time and advances. Well then you'll know it is time to sell. And there are many examples for this. For example, you can take a look at General Motors. And finally, you should have some kind of risk assessment. The first thing that I recommend to everyone is that you have to quit all the cool de sacs and cliff and concentrate on the projects that are in the deep. This is difficult because sometimes you love more than one thing, right? But if you are not going anywhere and you have identified that one of the projects is in a deep with future potential, then you have to let go of the other things. The second thing is that you have to persist and find out what can you improve. There is always something to improve. So concentrate on improving one person at a time. It might be that you have to read some book, do some more research, find more money with investments or with debt or whatever. You have to persist and improve. So take your time, find out what have to be improved and do it. You also have to to focus in the long term rather than in short term vision. Maybe it will help if you can put a roadmap somewhere where you can look at it. Maybe you have a journal or future vision or something like that written down. I don't know, everyone is different here. I find that for me it doesn't help to write down like the future things that I would like to have, you know. But you have to have a long term vision and adjust your strategy for the long run. And as I said, sometimes you need to seek feedback and collaborate. I'm super bad at this but I can't tell you how often I have been stuck in something and then a second opinion or view or even collaboration have brought me further. So you have to do that. You have to seek feedback, collaborate if that's what it takes to bring you further. So now that you know, go out and find out where you are. And if you are in a dip, it's cool. It's a natural process and now you have the tools to think about it. If you made it so far, consider liking and subscribing this video for more content like this. And as I always say, never give up and keep trying to be the best version of yourself. Check out.